Hey everyone and welcome back. So we're going to start from a fresh project just so that we, like I said, we can get every step kind of documented and explained as we go through creating a working AR application. So I'm just going to create a new project. I'm going to create a completely blank 3D project. We don't need any of the universal project templates or anything. Be sure to set this to be stored in the location of your choice and then just name the projects. With that ready to go, we can just press create and let this do its thing. Okay, so with the Unity project up and running, the first things we want to look at is getting the AR packages installed. So to do this, we're going to go to the Windows and then we'll go to Package Manager and we'll just wait for this to load a, uh, for a few seconds. We'll be keeping the project as tidy as possible. So we'll add in the packages that we need specifically as and when we need them. So there will be a lot of different AR plugins that we can install here, but we'll just focus on the ones to get the very base functionality running first of all, and then we'll come back and add more if we need them later. The first one that we're going to need will be obviously the AR Foundation Pack. So we'll come here and press install. We can actually skip the AR subsystems and move straight on to the AR Core XR plugin. So AR Core is the one for Android packages. And once that one has finished installing, we're just going to install the AR Kit. XR plugin as well. So this is for anyone using then the Apple platform. So that is it for the package installation that we need. So we can close this window now. The next thing is going to be getting the scene that we have uh, ready for our AR deployment. So we've got a few errors coming up down here so we can just clear that if you have those as well. And I'm also going to set the project folder structure at this stage too. So I'm going to come here under assets, we'll create a new folder and I'll call this one scripts. So this will probably be done in the next video so that we can kind of separate things out nicely, but we'll have this ready to go if we need them. We're also going to have a folder in here and we'll call this one uh, prefabs. And of course we have our scene folder already. Uh, now in this scene, this is going to be perfectly fine. The only thing that we actually need is the directional light. Uh, we'll be creating our own AR camera in a moment so we can delete the main camera and just make sure that that is saved in the scenes folder. So to make this AR ready, we're going to right click in the hierarchy, go to XR, which has been added as an option just through the packages we've just installed. And the first thing that we want is an AR session. Now, another way to do this, of course, is to go to game object XR and we'll add this in this way. Okay, so a quick look at the AR sessions. Now, this one is one of the, uh, the one that I've added, first of all, is the AR session origin. Now, this will be the relative space that everything is kind of based around in the deployment. So one thing which is really worth looking at here is the script which is on this. There's quite a lot of information in the comments. I definitely recommend taking some time in reading through this section of comments just here. It tells you exactly what this class is uh, responsible for and it has some important things about how space is processed when you've deployed the application. And it basically is because this is going to be where you want to nest child objects to inherit their position and rotation from. So like I said, definitely worthwhile coming back here and just taking a quick read through this so that you have a better understanding of what the AR uh, session's origin is responsible for. Now, the other thing that this has is our AR camera. So like I said, we've added in our own AR camera now by using our session's origin. The only thing I'm gonna do is change the tag on this to main camera and just make sure that the object itself is in zero, zero, zero so that we know that we're kind of centered in the world where we place our camera. The next thing we need is if we right click again, go into our XR option and this time we want the just AR session. Now this is going to be responsible for actually creating the AR session when you deploy this and controlling whether it's running, whether this is where you would do things like resetting it so that it will start re uh, clear everything that it has stored about what it's found in the world and reset that. So this is very important that you need an AR session in the world and it's also important again it's worth reading the comments here uh, that this is an object which is expected to only have one in the world. If you have multiple sessions, then they will all try and start tracking a session and you'll get things clashing. So make sure that you only ever have one of these in the world. And again, just read through some of the comments here to get a better understanding uh, in a bit more depth of why you'd want to make those considerations. So these are the two main things that we need to get going for an AR session. This will actually technically be tracking if we were to deploy this to a device now but it doesn't have the plain information at this stage, so we wouldn't see any of those uh, surfaces being tracked. So to actually implement our plane tracking, we're going to right click one more time, go to XR again, and we want an AR default plane. So all of this is coming from the AR Foundation package library. And again, this has got a lot of different scripts on this one. This is making a dynamic mesh at runtime based on the surface that it finds. In here, we have things like the mesh renderer. If we press on the debug plane, we can see the mesh and the material that it'll be using down here. So again, this is one of the places you want 
to look if you want to change the visual effects of things uh, or the aesthetics of the mesh generation when you've deployed this this is where you're going to want to look make some changes to these and you can get a little bit more control over how the mesh looks when it's being generated for our purposes so we just want to get this running so what we want to do is grab this we're going to drop this into our prefabs folder so this is going to be our plain prefab that we want we can delete that from the scene now we don't need that to be here what we want to do now though is go to our ar sessions origin we're going to add a component and we want to find the ar plane manager so again we can tell this is just another part of the foundation library uh, based on the icon here we've got our plane manager we want this to detect everything that will be perfectly fine uh, you can set different types of detection here for vertical or horizontal and then of course it's asking for the plane prefab which is what we've just created so we're going to drag that over here and we now have our AR session origin with the AR plane manager so now that when it finds some information some surfaces to, that it's uh, detected as valid we will also be drawing our default plane over those surfaces now at this stage this would be ready to go that's the goal of this tutorial is to get the plane detection implemented uh, now I just want to show in all of these videos I'm going to go through and kind of show the failures of getting things deployed as well as just going straight to the success just in case you miss one of these steps when you do it yourself hopefully showing what can go wrong will kind of remind you of what you needed to do to fix that so with my phone plugged in I'm going to go to the file and build settings make sure that you have the Android platform selected as your default build platform so I'm just going to have to switch uh, platform here uh, and again of course remember this is based on going from a completely empty project so this is why we need to do these extra few steps uh, it's because in any new project this wouldn't have really been accounted for with that platform switch though but like I said this should be ready to go and get everything working but if we hit build and run I know that we're going to get some errors and I just want to show you what they are what they mean and how we fix them Okay, so I've selected the build and run option. I'm just going to attempt to save this to the desktop as a test APK. And if we hit save, like I said, immediately we are returned with some errors down here. So there's only two of them, very simple to fix, but again, but it's just worth taking a look at them. So the first one, it says that currently the uh, project is set to Android API level 19 and the uh, minimum SDK version for this is 25. I want to make a point of this because if you're watching this in a year's time uh, the APK version may require 25 or 26 so again this is worthwhile doing just to see specifically what you need to fix and also I'm going to aim for the lowest version available I think we've got access to 25 and 26 at the moment um, but of course that's going to limit the number of devices that you might be able to deploy this on so I'm going to aim for the lowest version that it recommends that we have here and then there are some other kind of more vague error messages at the bottom and we're going to fix all of those in one go so what we want to do is go to edit and then project settings we want to go to player and then also make sure that you have the other settings drop down open so drop the other settings down and there's a few things that we can change here to get the the best implementation when we're running in VR so the first thing is we want the auto graphics API to be ticked so make sure that we have that ticked and ready to go and we also want the dynamic batching to be ticked as well so again tick that one now the next thing is if we move down you can change the information here so this is the way that the uh, application will display on your device so the default company will be your company name or just uh, your name in general if obviously you're not deploying this as a company so I could change this to the channel name uh, it really doesn't matter what you have here and then the name of the project itself and generally when you're deploying these you keep everything in lowercase so this is just kind of general Android application deployment stuff here um, so I'm just going to call this one uh, YTAR for YouTube augmented reality um, so that is something that you can change if you left that as it was that wouldn't actually break anything but it's just going to help track where this is being stored and what it's being stored as on your device and then the important thing that we have here uh, like I said we currently have this targeting API level 19 uh, and we want to take this all the way up to 24 so I actually said that 25 and 26 might be available we've actually got the option to go all the way up to 28 but like I said that may not work um, I've tested and can be certain that, that at the moment 24 works and like I said that gives us the chance to hit the highest number of devices so once you've made that change you should be good to go so we can close this and obviously unity automatically saves all of these uh, settings we can go back to file build and run and we can do the same process again so this is going 
want to remember where I tried saving it to desktop previously, what I've called it. Uh, the device is still plugged in and you can see that the build is successfully processing this time. Okay, so I'd just like to give a small demo here. So this has been deployed to the device successfully. Just wanted to show kind of confirmation that it all worked. I uh, didn't need to do anything off camera. So all of the steps I've taken in this video are the exact steps I've taken to get this working. Uh, and it, we've got some very basic plane tracking going on here. It's not quite as in-depth as the one in the AR sample project. You can see there's no kind of dots trying to track specific uh, areas of a plane. This is just very simply looking for a flat surface, whether it's vertical or horizontal, and then mapping our default plane uh, mesh onto that. So this is kind of all I really wanted to get working in the first video. I was aware that there were going to be some more kind of technical things to uh, look at in theory rather than jumping straight into the script, uh, just because they're really important things, which if you forget about them or didn't know about them, it can stop you from getting a build going. And it can be really annoying uh, when you've actually got the AR application set up perfectly and it's just getting it to the device, which is the problem. Okay, so with all of that built and working though, I will leave that video here. Like I said, I just wanted to get the basic plane implementation done. That means that we have that confirmed working and ready to go so that in the next video, we can start actually scripting uh, and looking at how we can place objects onto those planes after tracking them with some custom logic. So hopefully that's proven useful. And of course, if it has, please do leave a like down below and consider subscribing to the channel to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.